Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Roland and I'm your tutor. I'm from thinkbrainwave.com and I'm here to teach you a little bit about trigonometric functions. In this video, we will be looking at the effects of the a and q value. We're looking at sine theta, where we've got a sine theta plus q. Now, I am sque squeezing right through these sort of theory notes, so don't stress too much about it. We will be going over it further in the next few minutes. When a is, is Greater than 1, we say there's a stretch in amplitude. When A is between 0 and 1, we say there's an amplitude decrease. When A is less than 0, there's a reflection about the x-axis. Therefore, it's negative. And when A is negative but not greater than minus 1, we say the reflection of or it is greater than minus 1, so it's between 0 and minus 1. There's a reflection about the x-axis and there's an amplitude decrease. So when A is negative, we will see the following. Right, with that sort of information done, don't stress, you can always find these sort of notes at thinkbrainwave.com because we keep a whole database of videos that's all supported by the notes and a set of tests. So if you are struggling to keep up, just make sure to pause the video, restart the video, or go and check it all out at thinkbrainwave.com. So first things first, as I promised, we will be discussing the effect of A. Now, it's much easier to explain something graphically. However, if you do like the whole writing structure, you can go and rewind and uh, peruse the information that I wrote down there. Otherwise, as mentioned, you can check out the, net, the, the notes at Think Brainwave. Cool, so when A is greater than one, we are not exactly looking at this graph just yet. We're saying A is equal to one, okay? This is preemptive. A is equal to one is your basic sign graph okay so your amplitude will be one and uh, your shift won't be anywhere it'll literally be at sine 90 you've got zero okay so your basic basic sine graph however when you're the value in front of the sine so if you had like three sine theta or two sine theta the 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 amplitude itself would be multiplied by that value so if you have a is equal to 2, you'd say your amplitude previously would be 1. You'd say 2 times 1, your amplitude is not 2. It doesn't just shift vertically upwards. It shifts vertically downwards, but it's just to show you that the amplitude shift would be increasing, okay, if you have an a that is greater than 1. Now, this is represented by that blue graph, which is quite clearly drawn there. Now, let's do the graph where a is between the value of 0 and 1. So, it's a positive value, but it is less than 1. So, as we can understand, if you increase the value, you increase the amplitude. Now, if you decrease that value, but it still remains positive, you decrease the amplitude value, as you can see by the green function. Now, there's a vertical shift decrease, as in you, might, you may have started at, for instance, your a is equal to 1 would be, your amplitude would be 1. Now, you may have put your value at 0 0.5, so your your amplitude would be 0.5. That's basically what that graph is showing you there. This is a lot of theory, so it's just basic understanding of where, where it's all coming together. I know that A is greater than 0 and less than 1 is a little bit confusing. That's why I'm putting it into perspective by saying, you know, if you could use a value of like 0.5, it would actually make more sense to, to understand how the graph is working. Now, if a is less than 0, meaning it is a negative number, however, it's greater than minus 1, so it's between minus 1 and 0, there is a reflection about the, the x-axis, okay? Now, that's always the case when you have a negative a, but in this case, let me draw it nice and neatly for you, you can see that it is reflecting about the a is less than 1 but greater than 0, Okay, so it took me two or three tries, but it's nice and accurate now. You can see that it has the function, the yellow function has flipped about the x axis. It looks like a mirror image of the green function that we previously drew. However, now let's look at a where it is less than minus one. It is obviously a reflection, as I previously mentioned, negative means reflection, but it's the same reflection as say an a greater than one so you have a massive shift in your amplitude it is directly proportional to the value so if it is minus two it will be a very big minus two times one so you've got a, a reflection 
and then you'd have a two as your as your range in terms of your amplitude okay if it was five you'd have five as your amplitude but it would be dipping to the minus five and then increasing to the plus five on the right hand side so with that said let's dive right into the effects that q has on the function so we've done q in previous examples not in this set, set of videos but if you go back to functions we saw that with the the linear function and with the um, exponential as well as the hyperbola and parabola the q had a certain effect now in the beginning of this video i mentioned certain effects but like very briefly i might not even have mentioned them they're just written down but now we will actually be going through these effects relatively quickly well not relatively quickly but let's have a look at it okay so if you have q being greater than naught there is a vertical shift upwards okay so your q being equal to naught would be your general basic sine function which would start at zero it would increase to one and it would get back down to zero minus one and then end up at zero okay now your sine graph when it has a positive q it means that it shifts upwards that's literally the same with the parabola with the hyperbola you know with when it comes to your asymptotes okay now when we have q's less than naught what do you think is going to happen well it's quite simple it's a vertical shift downwards okay there we go now we, we showed clearly there's the blue arrow pointing up showing the movement upwards and then you have a green arrow pointing down showing you the movement downwards it's quite a simple sort of understanding it's nothing too major and you should really make sure to just get this one into the head real quick and easy but focus a lot of energy on learning your a values those a values are imperative all right so when q is greater than naught we see an upward shift q is equal to zero there's no shift and then obviously when q is less than zero as we said before there is a downward shift and there we go easy game